Episode 9 – Full Employment We are often told that full employment should be the aim of every national economy. Every adult must work, or should he be unable to work due to ill health, age or the general paucity of jobs, he must be dependent on those who do through the governmental system of redistributive taxation and increased public indebtedness. But what if this isn't true? According to the social credit analysis of Major C. H. Douglas, not to be confused with Chinese social credit, it is neither necessary nor even possible for a modern industrialized economy to achieve this goal of full employment. If we look at the economy from a merely physical standpoint, without any financial lens being superimposed, it is obvious that we can physically produce everything that people can use with profit to themselves while only calling on a minority of the available labor force. It is also obvious that the situation is steadily improving as technological development continues to accelerate. Every year we can produce more and or better with fewer and fewer people working. Indeed, it has been predicted that 50% of existing jobs in the US will be automated within 20 years. The policy of full employment is not capable of being realized either, because outside of wartime demands and conditions, there is no economy that has managed to create enough jobs to meet the demand, largely artificial in nature, for jobs. Furthermore, a good proportion of the jobs that the economy does create has no meaningful or direct connection with the flow of real goods and services that answer to bona fide human needs. In other words, many of the existing jobs are useless, witless, redundant and or destructive. Economists are supposed to be keen on efficiency. Well, the first and most important form of efficiency has to do with getting the goods and services we need to survive and flourish with the least amount of labor and resource consumption. Any other arrangement is simply madness. So why do we have a policy of full employment instead of a policy of the minimum employment necessary? The answer lies in the fact that full employment is only necessary in a financial sense. Given the rules of the existing economic order, work is the normal and necessary way for a person to obtain an income or purchasing power. And since purchasing power is required in order to obtain the goods and services that a person needs to survive and flourish, work in the formal economy becomes necessary to life itself. But these man-made rules can be changed. And if we are to adapt ourselves to the realities of automation that characterize the fourth industrial revolution, they must change. According to the social credit monetary reform proposals developed by Major C. H. Douglas, it is possible and indeed necessary to replace the policy of full employment with a policy of increasing paid leisure. This animated series was sponsored by the Clifford Hugh Douglas Institute for the Study and Promotion of Social Credit. For more information on Douglas Social Credit, please visit socred.org or socialcredit.com.au. Be sure to like this video and please subscribe to our channel.